Hi, everybody. This is Carter Lee. I'm the writer and producer of Alpha City News, and I wanted to take a quick moment to thank the followers of my podcast for being so patient with me, not having produced an episode during the month of May. A variety of things happened. May is not my month to produce podcasts, apparently. Uh, But again, I'd like to thank you for coming back and listening to the show. And if you're a new listener, I'd like to thank you for trying it out. To let you know, from here on in, I will be producing three episodes per month. I'll be putting them out on the 10th, 20th, and 30th of every month. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do in February, but it won't come up for a while. So Um, so look for the next episode on the 20th of June, then the 30th, and then the 10th of July. Uh, Again, thanks for listening. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back. And uh, if you have a minute, drop us a review somewhere. Otherwise, enjoy the show. Bye. Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This week we have news about Captain Stupendous and Empyrean, the Neo Deities, Presto the Witch, A Flower, the Return of an Old Champion, and more. I'm Craig Allen, and this is Alpha City News. Eisner University, still reeling from the explosion that caused the death of student Jamie Evers some days ago, found itself the center of more havoc this past Tuesday. When the first workmen arrived to begin the process of demolishing the building in which the explosion occurred, they found themselves menaced by what one workman described as a giant rat roach. Nearby security cameras recorded a huge creature bursting out of the rubble of the building, and it did seem to be a horrible mixture of cockroach and the common rat. The rat roach menaced the demolition team and seemed prepared to pounce on one of the workers when the Viad creature, still wanted for questioning by the police in the death of Jamie Evers, the destruction of Evers' apartment, and Viad's fight with a creature in Alpha Bay came from out of nowhere to land on the rat roach's back. Very little of the actual fight was caught on camera as the battle brought down the remains of the gutted laboratory building, but what was caught on tape was the Viad creature, again shouting its own name, tearing open the chest of the rat roach and removing a glowing stone from inside, causing the rat roach to dissolve into a brown liquid. The liquid, secured by Eisner University scientists after the Viad had vanished again, is being studied intensely, although no answers have been found as to the rat roach's origin at this time. No workmen or students were hurt during the melee. A Flower, the Lady of Peace, gave a talk at the Deconic Women's Center Friday night, followed by a demonstration of her almost superhuman martial arts skills. The talk, which was standing room only, centered on A. Flower's philosophy of peaceful resolution to problems on both a personal and societal level, with violence being held as an absolute last resort, and even then dedicated to doing the least amount of harm possible. Her contention that most resolutions could be achieved with both parties getting at least something of what they wanted, with compromise at its center, led to a lively question-and-answer period, with many different scenarios being proposed and discussed. While few clear-cut solutions were arrived at, this followed A. Flower's claim that no single person or philosophy has all the answers, and that humanity is best served when many different viewpoints were given due consideration prior to the actual appearance of trouble in the real world. The martial arts demonstration, where A. Flower was assisted by students from Hugo Reese's Self-Defense Academy, was a rousing demonstration of the lady's ability to put action to her words. With A. Flower facing single opponents wielding sticks, swords, knives, and tasers, and then a final bout where she dueled ten armed students barehanded, subduing all of them while causing only bruises. 
The demonstration received thunderous applause. A. Flower remained after the talk to sign autographs, and the director of the Conic Center declared the evening one of the most successful in the Center's ongoing Women Empowered series. In traffic news, city road crews have closed off Bacon Street for three blocks north and south of the Either Avenue intersection. A battle between structure, the living building, and the wrecking crew caused widespread damage up and down the avenue. The wrecking crew was apparently trying to bring down the Talbert building for unknown reasons when structure stepped in. A large amount of broken window glass, masonry, and torn up road service is being removed and repaired as we speak, and city crews expect all but the Bacon Either intersection to be open by late tonight. The main problem is that structure was rendered unconscious at the end of the battle, and his five-story form remains where it fell, blocking the intersection. Normal procedure for a fallen building would be to cut apart the wreckage and transport it away by truck, but that the fallen building is a popular hero, normal procedure isn't possible. City supervisors are discussing various plans to lift structure out of the intersection and move it back to its normal resting spot on the edge of the city, but the logistical problems of moving a multi-ton building, even with the help of gravity-warping heroes like Lifter, giant heroes like Gargantua and Mammoth, and super strong flying heroes like Lady Lunar, and needing to do it while keeping the building intact, have meant a workable solution has yet to be found. Little is known about how structure came to be sentient and mobile, and even less about how it has managed to heal itself from wounds received in previous battles. Attempt to reach structure's consciousness by psychic means, Inspections by Dr. Escalapius have so far yielded nothing. We here at ACN hope for structures quick recovery. Alpha City News staff psychic Simon Minister reports that Presto the Witch has joined battle with the Master of Id in the fields of the human subconscious, which has had a disturbing effect on the everyday world we inhabit. Voluntary admissions to psychiatric institutions have spiked, and many in the city have experienced nightmares, hallucinations of threatening, hooded figures, and dreamlike sojourns to a small desert community threatened by a great evil, but protected by a soothing, disembodied voice. Simon has received visions of Presto rallying a host of angelic beings in direct combat with the master of Id's glowing black miasma of evil of huge glowing swords slicing through palpable darkness, of ebony clouds enveloping sun-like bodies and destroying them. Presto, at the center of a war of light and dark, was seen enacting a desperate working, the explosive effects of which spread through the riot of white and black, mixing both into a shade of uniform gray. Simon's vision ended there, and we can only hope that new visions or Presto's return, come soon. The Red Warlock and Sebastian If have apparently been trying to assist Presto from our realm, and have called in the help of one of the more fascinating magical champions to ever grace our fair city, the Gorilla Shaman. Some of you may know of the various times in the past century when the perpendicular universe we know as Earth-8 has made contact with our world, most notably in the mid-90s when the Alpha City from both worlds changed places for almost a week. The Gorilla Shaman was a key part of reversing the exchange, but found himself trapped in our world for almost five years before a portal could be opened back to his home world just before the turn of the millennium. During his time here, Gorilla Shaman proved to be a true hero, and became a stalwart member of the Hero Union. The combination of his vast magical knowledge and immense Gorilla strength made him a truly formidable opponent, and he even helped the still young Presto to hone her own abilities. How and when he arrived back in our world is unknown, but given that the Mistress of Magic is far from us right now, it's good to know that he's here to help defend us once again. 
Intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston managed to get a quick word in with Sebastian If, who reportedly said, Darling, it's wonderful to have the hairy fellow back again. Should Eldritch trouble arise while our dear champion Presto is engaged in the supernal sphere, the shaman and red warlock stand prepared to give it a good drubbing. I shall, of course, lend my own meager talents to the fray, but really I'm simply delighted to have my most tenacious opponent at backgammon to play once again. Ta now, must go. Business at the Hidden House, don't you know? Professor Angstrom, head of the Eisner University Department of Temporal Physics, has informed us that, through the use of his chrono calculator, he has been able to divine the actions of Captain Stupendous and Empyrean, who are, as we speak, sort of, in the distant past, fighting the forces of the atomic pharaoh, Rama Ultra. According to the professor, Rama Ultra has managed to gain control of vast swaths of our galaxy's past by drawing the Nomark and the Son of Set, alternate versions of Captain Stupendous and Empyrean themselves, from a possible future where Rama Ultra's plans have succeeded. In fact, according to the professor's calculations, there was a brief period this past week when Alpha City became Ultra Memphis, capital of Rama Ultra's interstellar empire, coinciding with a period in the past when the Captain and Empyrean were Rama Ultra's captives. Since that point, the two cosmic heroes have managed to not only check, but reverse some of Rama Ultra's control in that time, having led approximately a quarter to a third of the galaxy in armed uprising against the tyrant. Even now, sort of, in the distant past, two vast armies, one led by the Captain and Imperium, the other led by Nomark and Son of Set, are locked in battle on the Red Sands of Mars. Here's hoping that the Nomark and Son of Set crush the heretics and their rebellion to ensure the glorious supremacy of our god, King. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I had a strange moment there. I meant to say that we here at Alpha City News have no doubt the Captain and Empyrean will check the awful schemes of this tyrant, Rama Ultra. We have received a troubling report from boy photographer Johnny Munson in the form of his damaged flying video camera, I Spy. A small sidereal slide, the transport of the Neo Deities, opened at the Alpha City News bullpen yesterday, depositing I Spy onto the desk of Johnny's editor and guardian, Miranda James. The video recovered from the machine shows a chaotic battle taking place on the surface of despair, the home world of the anti-gods, enemies of the Neo Deities. The Neo Deities Izar, Exegesis, the Infinite Kids, and Forever Man had apparently staged a desperate invasion of despair to prevent Abraxas, the form destroyer, from using the Revelation Engine, an artifact of Ermond, the universe which existed before our own, to take control of all reality. The video recording shows the Neo Deities battling their way through the massed forces of the Deadling Knights. Aunt Agony and her Lady Destroyers, Mathengazar the Silent, and Grachnor, son of Abraxas, to reach the throne room of Fortress Despair, where the Revelation Engine had been placed, bursting through the doors of the throne room mere moments before Abraxas activated the engine. Johnny Munson, disguised as a courtier of Abraxas, managed to reach the engine during the melee, and the last frames of the video before I Spy was sent by Sidereal Slide back to Earth show Johnny himself activating the engine. While we don't know what Johnny might have caused the engine to do, experts have reported that the area of our galaxy, which used to hold the twin planets of Amazingville and Despair, are now empty. The final fate of the Neo Deities, the Anti God and Johnny Munson himself are, at this time, unknown. And closer to home, Alpha City is less than a week away from deciding who will be its mayor. Will we stay with the incumbent who has served for eight years with distinction, 
or will we elect the current frontrunner and former supervillain Richard Tricky Dick Noxon? It's your decision, Alpha City. Just remember, on election day, vote early and vote wisely. And in this week's Super Combat Scorecard, the Gadabout fought the Bon Vivant over a table at Basidio. Rocket Red Glare and Violet Ultra teamed up with the monochrome men, Zwart and Vit, to take down the Kaleidoscopian. Johnny Whiplash and Whippersnapper stopped the Outrider. Tiny Man and Giant Lad took on Mr. Average, while Hair Dr. Odd weirded out the Normalizer. The Triangle Gang, Obtuse, Acute, Scalene, and Right were dealt with by the Square Peg. Deltoid Dan got smacked down by Gargantua. Javelin was paddled by Captain Ping Pong. Swamp Water got boiled by Heatstress. The Terrible Twos lost a battle of wits with Baby Hawking. Jackie Quick wound up spinning Jenny. Thrash Nebula was dispersed by the High Frontiersmen. Mr. Low Stakes found some kids who took money from a friend's lemonade stand and made them give it back. The Templar and the Merovingian fought over the King of France. Chopstick outhandled the Spork. The Klansmen got whooped by Forty Acres and the Mule. The Bricklayer took on Brick Red, and they both ended up pretty happy. The Phantom of the Park lost out to four weirdos in face paint. And finally, Big Weird Joe beat up the dope. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Written and produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds provided by Acidus, who you can find on SoundCloud. Alpha City News is also on SoundCloud, on Libsyn, on iTunes, and at RhymesWithGeek.com. Thank you for listening.